Hello and welcome to To The Final Bell, the Geelong Cats podcast. We are brought to you by Panther Tyres. Big thanks to the guys at Panther Tyres. You need anything sorted for your cars, check out the guys at Panther Tyres. They will look after you. We're going to be talking with, well, former podcaster, a great friend of the show, a man we had to move on just because we got a better offer from Matthew Stokes. Zach Tui, 200 gamer, or about to be 200 gamer, will be joining us a bit later on. We're going to get to your questions. I've got Scotty Gallon and Matty Stokes with me, as I do every single week. Scotty Stokesy, hello to both of you. Hello, Cameron. You might notice I'm in different surrounds because we went national last week. You know that, boys? No. I was sitting down the couch watching the news because I love to keep up with the news. And Joel Selwood story and here we are our four heads on the channel 10 news i'm like oh okay i look good in the car that's a good result (laughs) oops well i've gone back i've got boxes packed behind me again so hopefully this is we go national we're we're everywhere that's a a worry stokesy how's your week been Uh, it's been pretty good actually cameron Uh, i can't complain um pretty good weekend nice weather uh pretty cruisy um We've obviously got the, delivered those nice hampers that we'll talk about later on. But oh, yes. My kids yes. got into them pretty early this morning, so I think we're in for a long day, um, which um, she's got a lot to answer for. Um, I suspect call. Cameron would have got into some of them. Uh, well, yeah, Power Core Country Festival coming up this <laughs> Sunday. We're going to talk with Nicole Newman, who's um, the uh, food purveyor, and they supplied some magnificent little hampers for us. And I sat down and watched a movie last night and nailed a fair chunk of the rocky road that was supplied. <laughs> it's a very large one, Kevin. That's a great effort. I'm not it, shocked, but it's, it's still it's a good effort. When I say fair chunk, I mean the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't just your regular size either nah, for the listeners. I, okay, well, so we're recording this on a Wednesday. I mean, who on a random Tuesday night w- sits down and watches The Hateful Eight, Ooh. a Tarantino movie that goes for two and a half hours, just absolute Tarantino-style violence and <laughs> swearing and blood and gore and nails an entire, <laughs> entire rocky road. Um, it, it someone who's usually in bed at seven o'clock. This oh. is a very big night for you. Well, the whole time I was thinking, just go to bed. What are I was, you doing? I was, I was saying you kind of look like very similar to looks you used to rock up to recovery in. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm happened? Hung, hung over from rocky <laughs> road. <laughs> chocolate. Oh, yeah. Let's talk some footy. Friday night. Yeah. Good win by the Cats. What oh. a st- the start, Scotty, you were up and about. You were flying. I, I may have been on the early text to you two <laughs> wonderful gentlemen because the, uh, the Western Bulldogs were legitimately on another planet for 30 minutes there. Six goals in the first quarter. Air Norton, your man. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Dominant. You- you pride yourself. You're a very experienced commentator on many levels, and I, I judge your opinion, but you were very clearly wrong when you declared the King brothers way better than Ed Norton, and I see, just reminded you of that. See, journalists, again, putting words in people's mouths. Matthew, I you see, were here last week. You heard him declare that. Correct? I posed the question, didn't I, Matthew? I asked our man, Scotty, would you Matthew, prefer Norton who or Ben or Max with? King? I'm calling you Matthew, you used to. You sound like my mother. <laughs> Uh, I even gave you a mention on uh, ABC Radio on Friday night, Scotty. Oh, well, talk I, to me. I said, one of my uh, one former of my, employees. Is one of my good because... friends, uh, big Bulldog supporter, Scott Gallen. Uh, I posed the question. This is early on <gasps> in the game. I said, King Brothers or Air Norton to start a team off. And I said, without hesitation, you backed in Aaron Norton. And you were looking good for that first quarter. As, what uh, did your played? co-commentators say? Who were you with? I was with Alistair Nicholson, Kelly Underwood, and Michael Malthouse. Oh, Mick! What did man Mick say? Uh, no, I don't think he. I don't think he made comment. I think the others just <laughs> nodded their head and said, "It sounds good." And but, Ann Norton produced in the first quarter, but then the cats came oh, flying back. P. This, Dangerfield. P. Dangerfield. Oh, well. <laughs> Now, when he plays like that, I, I reckon there was a game earlier on in the year. Now I'm drawing a blank as to which one it was. He. When he plays in that almost vicious contested style where he, there's a pack of 10 players and he just says, well, that's my footy. I'm the big grade six. You little grade preps are just mm. kicking the footy around the school oval. That's my footy. 
and he comes in and obliterates packs. He is just incredible to watch. I think um, at quarter time, I think he had two possessions, I think. And then I think he maybe had 14 to 15. Um, to be able to watch that quarter and the influence that he had on that was a suit. A reminder of our little weapon that we have there. I mean, we've been able to get to second on the ladder with Cam Guthrie and Menegola and, and these type of players being able to hold the fort for our team because I think Paddy has been a very good servant this year, but I don't think it's been to his standards. And to sit back and watch that and to say we've got that up our sleeve and we've got our our heart and soul um, you know, waiting to go in, in, in Jolly, I mean... It just makes me alleviate any issues or, or hesitation I had that our boys should be the favourites for the flag. Yeah, that's no, well well said, Stokesy, because, uh, I mean, 20 contested possessions you ended up with. Phenomenal. It, the feeling that the load has been shared right across the season is what has got us all excited about the Cats. But even again on Friday night. So you're right. It was a Dangerfield, uh, an incredible performance by Patrick Dangerfield. But again, it wasn't, it wasn't solely reliant on him because Cam Guthrie was still excellent in the midfield. Brandon Parfitt was still very, very good in the midfield. Tom Stewart, excellent down back. Rowan up forward, all of that. It, it's not like it was Dangerfield or nothing. I know his performance was the difference between the Cats winning or losing. Yeah. But it wasn't only him. And, yeah. and that's been in the past where I've, as the worry has been is in a big final, we're down, whatever it is, it, it's got to be solely based on him or Joel or Tom. This was a shared performance with Dangerfield excelling within that shared performance. And that's what got the win. Gee, that, that makes me so much more excited than just a one-off blinder by Patrick Dangerfield. The, the I, I sense that he's got, he understands it's not, yeah, I think when he first got to Geelong, he was so, oh, you know, I've got to win this flag, so determined that it was sort of my responsibility. I think he gets it and he's seen the growth of the other players. Because you have to have an adjustment in your own head, don't you, boy? I mean, he's not going to dominate every game, but he, I think he gets it more stakes. Is that, does that make sense? I think so. And I think once you get a little bit older, you understand the reliance of your teammates. You're only as, as good as your 22nd yeah, yeah. player. So if you can have an influence on, on them and being able to give them the confidence to get a little bit better in themselves, it goes a lot way bigger, a lot a longer way to help get team success than worrying about the individual side of things. I think what, what really stands out is the composure of our football club now. I mean, at quarter yeah. time, it could have been easy for Scotty to get up there and just absolutely break the performance that we had in that first quarter. But he looked really measured. He, looked, he was able to talk to his players and, and talk through what went wrong in that first quarter to then be able to go and rectify it, you know, for the remaining three. To be able to do that really gives me confidence knowing that in a final is that if we do happen to fall behind or we are in a tussle, the club in the coaches and the players are able to regroup, have composure and say, this is what we need to do. Let's work through it and we'll get a result. So it was a bloody great result for our football club in, in, a, in a lot of ways. But heading uh, not too long into finals, to be able to have that performance just gives me enormous amount of confidence that our boys are up to the challenge of, of going all the way. And the, the trust and belief that it builds is, is big for me too. You, you're right, Stacey, in the calmness with which they went about it, but also just as players across the group, uh, and I go back to the lessons we learned along the way, is when everybody is on the same page and working way through a difficult situation within a game and you figure it out together the individual brilliance of some players start shining on the back of the collective collective group. Little things like later on in the game, so Eastern Wood gets injured, a bonus for the Cats. They identified the matchup of Gary Rowan versus, uh, I've gone blank. Um, Gardner. Former Cats, yeah, Ryan Gardner. Thank you very much, Scotty. Gary Rowan versus Gardner, a matchup that the Cats loved. So all of a sudden, Tom Hawkins wasn't, the number one focal point, always deep. He shifted out and probably to the side a little bit, still there as an option, but happy to let for a brief or for a part of the game, Gary Rowan be the main focal point because the matchup was better suited Rowan versus Gardner as opposed to Hawkins versus Keith. Now Hawks still played an incredibly important role, 
but it didn't need to be all about him. And that's those little subtle shifts and adjustments within games where things haven't gone perfectly are, are important. It, it doesn't, when the proverbial hits the fan, it doesn't need to be Dangerfield, Hawkins, Selwood are going to get us out of this, otherwise we're screwed. It's let's all get us out of it. And then whichever player has a bit of a day out on the back of this brilliant team performance, uh, so be it. And we end up winning, winning the game. Can I pose a question in a 50-metre sprint with you two gentlemen and Gary Rowan? How much would he win by? <laughs> I, I refuse well, to answer that question, Scott. Well, I'd How about that first and then I'd beat him. <laughs> How about that tackle on uh, the Bulldogs' ruck? Oh, I mean, Tim came English, from yeah. The other end of the ground, it seemed like. Rowan's last quarter was extraordinary. Um, yeah, you mentioned how they, the poise everyone showed, but there was just little highlight reels apart from Dangerfield, which was very impressive. It really was. Uh, a man who showed, well, we can say it now because he's not with us, a fair bit of toughness and bravery uh, after oh, a on. massive hit was Zach Tui. Love that. What, now, to our listener, we're about to talk to uh, Zach. Um, we will not be pumping him up. We, in fact, will be making sure he's aware that there was a lot of carry on, a lot of mayo. Uh, but just between the three of us, that would have hurt. That first hit when you're wide open and, and you get... Uh, that, Stokesy, that sick feeling when the ball hovers in the air just a little bit longer than you want and you've got to have your arms up waiting for that ball to land in your hands and you know you're going to get hit. Oh, that's a terrible feeling. It, the field, isn't it? it happens every bloody day. Um, <laughs> especially when you and Joel Corey and Cameron... Uh, oh, the the and helicopters. Too, Kelly and Jimmy Bartell handballing for the one-twos because you... <laughs> and you, you, you purposely just pop it up and I'm sitting there as I'm only 170 centimetres. I get I got it every game. Toughen up to eat. What do you think? Oh, Irish people are tough. <laughs> Uh, no, it certainly work. got milked. There, there is the no whole thing apart from when you're about to get dumped um, than being wide open. So now, uh, knowing knowing uh, Tui, I, I do love to rubbish people and not pump them up. But he is as tough as they come. Um, so if he's carrying all that, it must have bloody hurt. Oh yeah. We'll um, be asking him about the mouth guard incident. That was one of the highlights. Of the yes. <laughs> yes. It was a terrific win. Uh, Reece Stanley's a little bit in doubt at the moment. Um, I want to ask him about that as well. Perhaps he'll make way. Just what's your feel? If Stanley doesn't play? Well, Josh Jenkins is allegedly playing very well in these mystery scratch matches. And look, if, if you want to have a look at him, you've probably got to do it now. I mean, Sav's been in and out. I like Sav in the ruck. They don't mind playing him there. And you've got Blitz as backup. So, but maybe they just have a look at Jenkins, maybe. I like Sav as the option, personally. Yeah, I personally would go with Sav, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we, we throw JJ in there and, and see what we, can, what we can find in him. I think he could be the difference. He might have a little bit of an X factor in the finals that we actually can... He's been around for a long time. He knows what it takes. He might be able to you know, help us in the line and maybe go into the ruck and, and pinch it. I've been, hearing some, I've been hearing some little whispers that uh, Lockie Fogarty uh, played all right in the, scrat, in the um, reserves practice match and doing very well. Uh, oh, I also, I'm losing faith on something else, Cameron. Yeah, I read I today's saw paper. A headline. Yeah, what, I saw a headline. I didn't read it. What's happened to our man? No, I think he may um, possibly be flying home, Stokesy, because uh, this is Nakai Cockatoo we're talking about. Uh, oh, his birds, partner is, is due... Any minute now, is that correct? No, uh, end of next month. Um, so she's still a fair way off. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's eight weeks away. Um, yeah, look, I do know why he might be coming home or whatever that is, but I think uh, I'll let the club announce that. But, um, yeah, I mean, we'll play it out and see how it unfolds. But um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not as bad as what we think and um, yeah, we can see Cocky soon. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Uh, we're going um, to take a break because I know our man Reggie is about to jump online with us. I want to, uh, we do want to ask him about his carry-on and also um, what he was doing with that mouth guard. The Powercore Country Festival is this week as well. We're going to 
as I mentioned before, we're going to talk with Nicole Newman. Um, obviously, the, not being at the MCG and not being able to go to the MCG and support the farmer's market. We're going to talk to her about what you can do to still support some of the local producers of some of the magnificent food that we've um, been very, very fortunate to check out and, uh, and test out some of their products. Uh, we're going to get to your questions a little bit later on as well. Um, also want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors. GMHBA continues to support this podcast. It's important to stay healthy while staying at home. That's why GMHBA have partnered with Kiza. If you're a GMHBA member with Extras Cover, you can access telehealth or in-centre physio from the team at Kiza with no out-of-pocket expenses, up to annual limits until September 30, waiting periods and sublimits apply. So it's GMHBA Kiza for details and stay healthier at home. And also Deakin University Digital is in Deakin University's DNA with 40 years of experience in distance and online learning. Discover why they're the number one Australian public university for overall educational experience. Premium, proven, loved, study online at Deakin. Let's take a break. Reggie's up next. Welcome back. You are listening to to the final bell. This is what we've been after, gentlemen. The great Reg, Zach Tui, is with us. (laughs) Now, Reg, welcome, courage. first of all. Oh, courage. Could you have milked Man the ribs steel. anymore? Made of steel. Oh. Doc- <laughs> doctor said he's never seen anything like it. It's a six-month injury. Just battled every, on. Every uh, he, time he, he never camera... seen someone carry on so much. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> that came up as well. <laughs> Every so, time uh, the camera got to you, it was, oh I'm, oh, I'm sucking in the big ones. Oh, must have been. Come on, it wasn't that bad. Pretty bad. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> standard me, just back and back with the flight and just doing those <laughs> silly things that, you know, not many players are capable of. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the official diagnosis of the love tap, Zach? Ah, look, it's... It's a bit sore, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Punctured lung, nothing exciting, ribs, no. Nah, nah, there's a little bit of damage in there, but I do get to train in a few days and see if I can play. So it's not as bad as it could have been, despite my carry on. <laughs> now, oh, Cameron, I think you're going to ask what we're going to ask. Yeah, the, the ribs were serious, Scotty. Oh, oh no, I, we I, take I, that very seriously. He, he, he was wide open, he got smashed, and in your words, I think he knocked the soul out of you, which was a very funny <laughs> line, Reg. Well played. But what's the go with the mouth guard? What did the mouth guard ever do to you? Well, I was, uh, I was not having a good day. And <laughs> I, just, I actually just had a contest in the pocket, and it wasn't much of a contest, to be fair. It was just like a normal. But um, went to ground, was pretty sore, wasn't happy that I didn't do better in the contest, and it just summed up my night, and I had a massive suck coming off because, I don't know, I, just, I was just angry, Cameron. I was just really angry. I wasn't playing good feeling sore we were still losing at that stage i was just all going against me feel better now though you okay no i'm still sore bro you know what I mean? <laughs> just, i'll just battle on you you'll never hear me talk about it no sorry bob <laughs> lucky it didn't affect your roaming brian zach that was uh, yeah. they couldn't find anyone else you're near death and here you are yeah, fronting it, wasn't, up. It, wasn't my, it wasn't my best work that um i committed to it pre-game um and kind of cut them back out. <laughs> so wasn't wasn't great. They did cotton on to your every teammate is your most favourite teammate. <laughs> it's true. They're like my babies, you know. They're like my kids. I can't separate them, which is a bad analogy because I hate my kids. But you know what I mean. <laughs> we told you about this. You're not allowed to say those things on this podcast. Yeah, you, know, you beat up other people's children last year. I never said that. Do- I said you should be able to shout with them. Are, you, are your kids up there in the hub with you? They've come up in the second hub, so they're in quarantine at the minute. So oh, that's something to look forward to, yeah. You're hoping to keep them in quarantine a little longer? Well, fing- yeah, fingers crossed they're not allowed out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't wait to see them, Cameron. I'm not going to let you speak about them like that, so I can't <laughs> wait to see them. Uh, you're a good man. To the game, uh, we, we do, Steve, about your ribs. But quarter time, things were looking... Uh, 
rather awful. The, mind you, the dogs were on fire. Scotty was texting both Stokesy and I saying how good Aaron Norton is and how good the dogs are. Premiership favourites in Scotty's eyes. But it seemed like a pretty calm response after quarter time. Just can you can you give us a little brief insight into the quarter time huddle? What the what the chats were like? Yeah, well, I mean, six goals is clearly well. It's a big deficit no matter what. But in a shortened game, the worst thing you can do is is panic and try and claw it back as quickly as possible. Um, it's very it's it's a very attainable lead if you just kind of peg them back, maybe one or two goals a quarter. Get them, get the margin to a you know a close enough gap at three quarter time where it might only take one goal to really break it open. And um, we we were pretty, we were awful in that first quarter, and it was pretty clear some of the stuff we were doing wrong. So it, it wasn't a mystery why we were letting them get through us. Um, and, and look, once the quarter time break came, it was just a perfect opportunity to like reset and almost start the game again. Um, and, and to our credit, I mean, I thought we did it pretty well. We didn't panic. We got the one or two goals in the second quarter. And, um, yeah, we played all right from then on. Matthew? Am I up? Okay. I thought, I th- I thought you were going to ask something. <laughs> Sorry about that. that. I froze there for a second. That's, Sorry. That, that's what happens when we're working on Zoom here uh, to yeah. all of our listeners there. <laughs> I thought he was going to talk. Hey, Reg, it's been a, been a pretty big couple of weeks. Obviously, you played some really good teams in St. Kilda and Port. You went over to Adelaide, who obviously struggled, but had a good win last night. Um, to play Western Bulldogs to be, what was it, 33, 39 points down at three-quarter time. The belief in this group now of getting through that month of different types of opponents, to be able to get through that only a month away from finals, that give you a massive amount of belief that your best um, is, is good enough, but also, too, that you're able to change the course of a game by, like you said, having a bit of a come ahead at quarter time to be able to work through the process of, of clawing back the score. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, we've kind of won in every way this year. Um, so we've had some really complete performances where we've had a good, comfortable margin at the end. But we've also had the games like the Doggies where um, we were blown out of the water early and then just kind of held on. It's a strange season. But I know Scotty said this in the past that um, waving the white flag and packing it in is just not an accusation I think you can level against our club. Um, even when we have lost games and, and lost by a comfortable margin, that sometimes happens. I don't think you could ever look at us and say the reason we've lost games is because we've given up. And that's a, a great trait to have and, and not every team has it. So um, our best is clearly good enough to, to uh, mix it with the best teams in the comp this year. But um, you don't have to be that far off to get caught on any given day. But yeah, like you said, on the weekend, we were way off in the first quarter, but we're able to adjust in game. So um, yeah, anything's possible this year. We talked about Paddy earlier, Zach, and obviously you know, we've seen him play lots of great games. But what's it like when he gets in the mood he was in after quarter time the other night? I mean, it's, it's nearly dangerous to be around the ball because he, he just gets it and goes through people. Yeah, he's brutish. Um, it's, it's the one thing that sets him apart, even from the other great midfielders who are all pretty strong in the contest. He is just savage when he gets um, when he gets that in that mood. Um, and uh, let's be honest, he he was the difference. He was the one who just willed yeah. us kind of over the line on the weekend. But yeah, he's remarkable. I've said this before. Um, when I do finish playing, he's definitely going to be one of a handful of players I look back on and think, geez, I was pretty lucky to see him up close because um, of all the great players I've been fortunate enough to play with, I think him when he's on is maybe the one most capable of tearing a game open. So he, he did that on the weekend. He was very much Brownlow Prez, he calls himself now. Back to his <laughs> Brownlow form. <laughs> <laughs> Love a little bit of confidence as well. Uh, another bloke who's back to his best, his All-Australian form, is your old sparring partner, Tommy Stewart. Do, along with Paddy, particularly in the, the three quarters, his... Talk about calming and just controlled performance uh, across the back line. He looks like he's back. He's got confidence in his body, confidence in the way he can see the game. He was incredible. Yeah, he is back to his best. And he's been, um, he's been pretty good for most of the year. He's, he's set himself pretty lofty standards. Um, but you're right. He obviously had a slightly interrupted preseason and, and missed the game or too early. But um, he's just settled right back into his very best form and, 
to be fair, our entire backline has been fairly remarkable uh, in the last few weeks. Um, Harry's Harry's been brilliant. Lucky Henderson has settled in and really changed the look of the team and like frees Blitz up. Um, but yeah, Stewie again was just outstanding on the weekend and he is absolutely back to his, his very best. We do have to look forward to this week's game. The Bombers Sunday afternoon. Uh, the Power Core Country Festival is the, is the game against the Bombers. Uh, Couple of question marks, Reese Stanley. I'm not asking for the uh, the the inside knowledge on whether or not he'll play. However, play a little hypothetical with me. Reese Stanley doesn't play. Is the starting ruckman Asava Radagalia, Josh Jenkins, or Mark Witzars? Oh, if Reese doesn't play, um, well, I would think. That situation has come up previously and Sav came in, I think, and they played basically the same setup that we've been playing with recent with recent blitz. So I presume that would be what happens. But having said that, I did go and watch the um a couple of the practice games. The the non selected guys are playing up here and, and JJ's peaking at a pretty good time. So I'm not sure if the coaches might consider getting him in for his first game. Now, it would be remiss if we don't talk about a very special milestone that's happening, Zach. <laughs> I'm shocked you haven't already mentioned it. 200. Not many of us get there. I didn't. Uh, yeah. Stokes, how many did you get? What's that? How many did you get to? I've got 200. Thank you very much, Scott. How many? All up. 200, I said. Exactly. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Well, <laughs> you might did go you, past Matt. Did you create your own hashtag, though, Stokesy, for your 200th? No, I don't have the personality as Mr. Reg um, and get away with it. But uh, no, it's good, a good milestone. Wow. So how do you feel, Zach? You know, reminisce, take us down. You know, you've, it's been an interesting journey. Island, oh, Carlton, Cats. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 an old, it's a great story. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> courage. Lots of courage. Oh, man, when you just think about the adversity and... Oh, <laughs> if it doesn't end up on film, I'll be amazed. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> oh, it's, crept, it, it's, it's crept up and um, obviously been a bit sore lately. But, I mean, if you can, if you can go most of your career uninjured, um, that goes a hell of a long way. And I've been very fortunate with injuries for most of my career. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of snuck up on me. Um, it doesn't seem that long ago I played my first game or my 100th game. So, um, hopefully it's it's this weekend. And it would be nice, actually. I was thinking about this the other day. It would be nice to get to play it alongside Merrick um, because, obviously, most of my career wasn't spent playing with another Irish guy. But to be able to share it with him would be nice because it's a long way off for him. But I'd be stunned if he doesn't go on to have a very long career. So, that would be nice. So hashtag two hundred is the hashtag that you've created. Um, I have not created it, Cameron. It was the media team <laughs> and the people. It was the people, I believe. It's it the game. People. <laughs> it was the people. <laughs> Am I right in saying this would be game number eighty for the Cats? Yeah. Yep. One twenty at the Blues. Okay, so we've just got to. No, I mean, no pressure. We've got to get you through another season just to. Um, Lock in the uh, father son or father daughter. By me. You go and have a chat to Elsie there, will you? <laughs> uh, it'll be a uh, it'll be a terrific day on Sunday. Did you watch the bombers last night? We're we're recording this on the Wednesday. Yeah. Um, did you? Yeah, watch I them? did. Yeah, I did watch them. Um, well, they're a bit like they're not dissimilar to like teams like Doggies and GWS when they get on a roll, they play quick and fast and and are really hard to stop. Um, but again, you know, teams like that, if you're able to turn it over at the source, you can sometimes catch them out of position. So it'll be an interesting one to see. I'm not sure, Essen in our team, you want to give a six goal head start. So fingers crossed we don't do that. Any last questions, Scotty or Stokesy, before we let the, uh, the great Reg go and celebrate? I, I just, Cameron, yes. now yes. when you're doing your Reggie 200th podcast, you know, <laughs> review, if you guys start talking about that Melbourne game, it's so. It's, <laughs> It's two and a half years ago. It's two and a half years ago. Guys, don't. I'm serious. Tommy, don't let them do it. We, we can't let it go. It's fact. It's silly. I'm silly. Where are you off to right now, Rich? You I just went ready? for a coffee and a walk, and I'm heading. it's our day off today, which are incredibly boring for me because I can't play golf, and the kids aren't here to annoy me. So it's 
an hour's drive, listen to a podcast, a better one than this, but listen to the podcast. And <laughs> What's that one called problem. again? I forgot its name. The, the elephant rope. rope. The elephant yeah, rope. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. We'll come back sooner or later if we come back. Hey, Reg, one real quick question before you go. The one thing that stood out to me before everything, the comeback, your carry on, down to the second quarter, was Scotty's tan. Now, oh, how good's yeah. he looking? Can you just talk about, is he sitting in the sun all day, every day, or like, just now, talk us through? I don't know, but he is, he is seriously so attractive at the minute. Like, <laughs> I'm not even joking. He's huge. He's, he's looking strong. He's got the little thingy going. He does get up. I have noticed he gets up early and goes for a dip. Um, and one of the players didn't see him strutting around the beach with his top off. So I'm not sure how often he's doing it, but it, it's bloody working. All right. He claims it's his wife's skincare products or something. Oh, it probably helps. But I'd also say it's the six hours of sun tanning. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the beard and the hair combo is working nicely for him at the moment. Yeah, and I think he knows it. Yeah. Oh, he does. yeah, I think he's happy. Uh, he certainly yeah. does. Reggie, you're a very good man. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good luck with what will hopefully be your 200th game. Get those ribs right. We want to see a little bit more carry on on Sunday. Uh, but enjoy the game, mate. Well done. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll be back. We're going to take a quick break. We want to talk. We're going to get to your questions, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Powercore Country Festival as well, coming up after the break. Welcome back. It's great to have you with us on To The Final Bell, brought to you by Panther Tyres. We've been talking plenty of football. We made mention right at the start that the Cats taking on the Bombers this Sunday in a massive game. Massive game for Essendon, given their run towards the top eight and big for the Cats trying to lock away a top two finish at the end of the year. It is also the Powercore Country Festival which it is every single year when the Cats take on the Bombers and the Power Call Country Fest. When 2020 will continue to support, as it does every single year, our regional communities and producers and celebrate their contribution to our country. Into its fifth year now, the Power Call Country Festival kicked off at the Marsh Series game between the Cats and the Bombers in Colac in March. Doesn't that feel like a long, long time ago? And a lot has changed since then. But Power Corps, the Cats and the Bombers continue to celebrate what makes the country great, culminating in Sunday's big round 16 match between the two sides. The Farmer's Market, which has become a huge fixture of the festival since 2016, has gone online in 2020 because of obvious restrictions and the game's not at uh, the MCG. I think the Farmer's Market is normally in Yarra Park, which is um, attracts a fair bit of the crowd out there to uh, to sort themselves out so please head to the cats website to purchase an amazing variety of produce and homewares and scotty stokesy i must say that uh we got to have a little sample of some of these magnificent products a little hamper drop down last night and not a lot of it survived and the very, very generous person who provided those magnificent hampers to us and gave us a little taste of what is available online is Nicole Newman from The Food Purveyor. Nicole, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Cameron. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you with us. And thank you so much for our, uh, our little taste. I, the chocolate pretzel that uh, <laughs> we got, I never got to taste that because um, my Nicole, um, my wife, Nicole, ate that straight away. Um, Scotty, I reckon the gin, probably gin would have well, uh, gone straight to It was hidden you. away, Nicole, wasn't it? I, I managed to find that remarkably. But uh, the granola and the rocky road, they didn't last long in this house. It was no. a magnificent array of food. <laughs> uh, as every year, Nicole, though, that food provider partners up with the club and, and, and um, works around the, the farmer's market, which has become incredibly popular part of the uh, Power Corp yeah. Country Festival, normally in Yarra Park. Yeah. But now online, tell us a little bit what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it is. And look, we've we've been involved since 2016 as well. I mean, you know, when, when the farmer's market first started, we, we started off with 11 stallholders. And over the years, we've grown that to around 55 last year. And 60,000 people walked through that farmer's market and were able to experience our region, basically, and be able to purchase produce direct from the makers and the growers, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us to showcase what we're capable of in this region. Um, and this year we've taken it online. So it's a virtual um, farmer's market and 
it's it's on our website, thefoodpurveyor.com.au, and it's all set up there, ready to go. There's there's close to probably eighty products sitting there, and you're right, you guys got to um, sample some of those last night. And um, the chocolate pretzel is one of our products, and it's probably our most popular product that we sell. Um, and the gin from Great Ocean Road Gin is sensational. But these producers, it's been such a tough time. Um, for all of them being able to um, continue to have businesses, stay in business. So this is another opportunity to basically get their products out there and, um, and be able to showcase them on this stage because the stage that is provided by this powerful country festival has been crucial and critical to a lot of these businesses succeeding outside of our region. So we've picked, a lot of these companies pick up customers further afield within Victoria, but often big customers out of Melbourne. Uh, so this is another opportunity to showcase what we're all capable of from this region. Stokes, Nicole, you... I think the biggest surprise for me, boys, was the vast array of different products that is in this region. Like we mentioned gin and there was... that Nicole, that's the fascinating thing. I don't think people would understand how mm. much different stuff is growing around this area. Yeah, correct. And um, I'm actually the chair of the G21 Agri Collective Limited, and we we work with all these agri businesses promoting what we do. And we've done a number of events over the last couple of years, bringing chefs from Melbourne to experience our region. And the great thing about this particular region, the G21 region, is that you have sea, you have land, you have wheat, you have sheep, you have cows, you have all sorts of different crops. Um, we pretty much can be a food bowl as such. Similar to what Tassie was, we're being discovered as a food bowl for the next generation. Um, and we just have so much ability to grow things in this region, which is fantastic. And, you know, the products are incredible. And that's not to say the rest of Victoria isn't amazing as well. We've got products from, you know, um, Ballarat, Bendigo, um, the Loddenshire. So there's a number of different products that fit within um, the Victorian footprint. But we're really proud of what we achieved down in this region. And, and my company normally does gift hampers, which is basically how you received it yesterday. And we just love working with and promoting all of these incredible producers. Well, I know that Stokes, he would have been, um, his body's his temple, so he would have stayed away from all the chocolate stuff. But you'll be cooking up a little feast or something, Stokesy, with the Screaming Seed Spice Company or something like that. Just... Yep. Got something in mind? Yeah, the peri peri will definitely get a workout. Um, <laughs> but Nicole, you've got a lot to answer for. My uh, my young fella um, is walking around with snowballs at like six thirty this morning. So. <laughs> Sorry, How about, about the that? mint option in them? What's so, that? There was a mint option too. It wasn't just the traditional. No, the raspberry, the white chocolate raspberry um, is. Look, I did have a little sample this morning to help me get out of bed, but. Um, yeah. Look, and he's going nuts in about two hours, Nicole. Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> look, for you. okay, that's fine. I don't mind, but um, <laughs> they're organic. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. it's all good then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and they're amazing too. They're a great story. They're from a company called Ground Hughes. And um, the gentleman was is an ex-chef, Rod, and his wife actually is a Clatworthy, so from Sawyer's Arms in Geelong. So you can never get too far away from a connection to Geelong around here. <laughs> Yeah. The Clapworthies are everywhere, absolutely. Um, they, are. It, they are magnificent products. Can you just tell our listeners um, how they can help support the suppliers? Yeah, it's really important. You know, shop local, shop with the knowledge that these people are making them from scratch. So they know their ingredients, they know where to source them from, and they are the makers and the growers. And I think that's really critical and, and important. But get on board, come to the, um, log on to the foodpurveyor.com.au and there will be a link on the CATS website that will take you to the virtual power core country market. And on there, you can buy everything from, um, you know, peri peri sauce to gin, um, the, uh, Sorry about the pretzels, they're delicious. And, you know, um, you know, the granola, there's a whole range of products that you can buy. But then you can also order, um, you know, fresh meat direct from the butchers, um, fresh ballerine, fresh fruit and vegetable boxes as well. So if you don't want the chocolate pretzels, you can definitely buy the veggie boxes. Um, but get on board and support these producers who are working so hard to make this incredible produce around our region. And I'm not going to get sucked in for a second and think that Scotty went straight for the granola. I know exactly where Scotty went straight <laughs> for. And it, 
was not that. Don't lie to us. Uh, Nicole, thank you so much for uh, having a chat and the, the great job that you are doing um, you. to all of our listeners. We know, please do support the local producers and, uh, and local um, businesses. And obviously as part of the Power Core Country Festival, the farmer's market, was it foodpurveyor.com.au? Yep, the foodpurveyor.com.au. Which will be on the CATS website, as Nicole just told us. So please do support all of those wonderful people. We can vouch for it. They were delicious. So appreciate <laughs> your support and thank you for your time no today. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Time for your questions now. Great to have a chat with Nicole there. Please do support any of those uh, producers that she was talking about and um, jump on the foodpurveyor.com.au, the CATS website as well, uh, and the online farmer's market. will be terrific. We're all vouching for it, as you just heard. But question time, Derek asked this one. At the start of the season, the family talked about what we'd love to see with the Cats this year, apart from obviously winning the flag. We came up with Cam Guthrie moving up to elite. How close do you think he is now? Derek, on the season so far, he is elite. The only thing that, the only hesitation I have about that is to be truly elite you got to finish off the season and produce it in finals as well. But Stokesy, right now, his season has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, Cameron, I think it has been. Um, elite. I'm a harsh judge. You know that I am. I would say he's elite. I'd say he is a B plus. Um, oh, actually, A minus. What about, season, what, about, what about just this season? Yeah. Uh, I, I, the way I look at absolutely, I think you th I, I put Patrick Dangerfield, Tom Hawkins, Mitch Duncan in the elite um, in our team, uh, and then I think right behind him is Cam Guthrie. Now, I, hang on, can I interrupt? You're talking about players, and I agree <laughs> with you, but on seasons, Guthrie's had a better season than Duncan and Dangerfield uh, on a total complete season. He'd be him and Hawkins would be. Leading best and fairest in the yeah, coaches would... award, he's equal fifth. Like he he's would... forty-eight. I think he'd be winning out, but I, I, just because you're having a good run of games doesn't make you automatically elite, Cameron. No, that's what I'm saying. To be to he's be truly performed elite, like an elite player. Can we say that for this period of time? Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that, Scott. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> he's influenced games. Like he, he's won a few games in a sense when a lot of blokes were off. He's oh, been I the don't, one I don't... flying the flag. I'm not trying to downcast what he's doing. That's that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to call him a champion. I know where you're going with that. I, yeah. I'm just, I, I just don't. We throw out elite superstar. We've got <laughs> we've got four superstars in our team. Oh, actually, guys, five. <laughs> um, and then there's a big difference between them being. But I do understand what you're saying, Cameron. But <laughs> me, yeah, I, I'm I'm a harsh judge. Uh, I still I still think he's probably winning our best and fairest. Um, level pedal with, with Hawking. And, I, and I'm with you. I, I'm big on the, my choice of words. I like to be careful. Champion, we throw out too, too no, much and superstar. Is. But champions are Ablett and Selwood and Sean Burgoyne and Buddy <laughs> Franklin. That's longevity of a game, of a yeah. high performance standard. Superstars are, yeah, uh, Nat, uh, Dusty Martin's a champion now because he's yeah. two Norm Smiths and all that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Nat Fife's still a superstar to me. He's not yet a champion because he hasn't yeah. produced it in um, finals consistently. Premierships, and yeah. All of that. Yeah. Um, Patrick Cripps is a superstar. Um, these sorts of players. But on, when I talk about elite, I would say elite is more the level that you're playing at within that season. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And I think Cam Guthrie has produced that to this point. But to have a truly elite season... He has to produce that now for the remainder of the season and through finals and play a really good final series. He doesn't have to be the best player of the finals, but I think he needs to produce a really good final series. Is that fair, Stokesy? Yeah, fair. Excellent. Thank you for the question, Derek. I love it when Stokesy and I have a good little discussion. It's always good. Uh, Marty asks, Ling and Scott... Do you think it's a coincidence that Tui is playing better this year since he is not on the podcast? Oof. Tui is a great guy, but you've got to love Stokes back on the Cats podcast. Oh, hello. Scotty, we what? loved having a chat with Reggie just before. Well, uh, to be fair, Cameron, we, we had to... 
be careful with our words last year at times when we were talking about team selection, Cameron. He was injured for his first season. I think last year he had an injury interrupted year and oh, he saw was not fit, the poor bloke. No, and now playing a very important role. And Marty, yes, we do love having Stokesy on because wow. everyone was loves Stokesy, call? but Stokesy obviously also just gives out some good wax every now and then, Scotty. <laughs> well, well Rose wanted back, but we made the call that Stokesy clearly showed more talent in I this think, area. I think I just heard, I hung around Neil Barm too much. And I think I learned <laughs> how to be a grumpy old man. Um, <laughs> how to give nice wax. <laughs> Uh, Dave asked this one, another one for you, Stokesy. Uh, recently, Stokesy mentioned that one of Joel's strengths, as in Joel Selwood, is being a great intermediary. Me- I'll learn how to talk eventually. What was that one word, day. Yeah. Intermediary between Scotty and the players. What are the typical barriers between players and the coaching group? Age difference, communication, bandwidth, or something else? And how does a great captain help mediate them? Dave asked that question, Stokesy. Tell us what is. What do we talk about when we talk about the the players, the coaches, the separation, and those leaders that are good at communicating between the two groups? Jeez, that's a great question. Um, uh, and there's a lot of um, different parts to that answer because you've got such a different array of age brackets in the playing group. So trying to get them to align that there are um, you being who you are and um, you know staying true to that, but also to align that we have values as a football club that you need to live by. Um, the coaches have a, a way of being able to say, well, this is the game plan that we want to play. You, you play to that game style or you play the twos. So there's obviously the, the AFL team, there's a VFL team, the young guys coming through who need a little bit of guidance and um, a little bit of reassurance of their, their place in the football club. You've got the older guys that are coming to the end. You know, you've got contracts coming up. Are they finishing? Are they looking at, next year and what they're doing. Some of them are looking at, you know, Paddy Dangerfield wants a flag, he wants it now. Um, so there's such a range of things that go on a footy club. If it could do a reality TV show of a football club, it would be a bestseller because it just has everything. Um, and what Joel is able to do is be able to be a sort of kind of like a chameleon and being able to go in all those different facets of the, the football club to be able to, um, bring positive influence um, and making sure that we all are on the one road to success. And you talk about even, you know, Cookie and, and our board. I mean, you know it more than anyone, anyone Lingy, that you need everyone um, in one direction and, and aspiring to get to that one, that one hill and that's to, to win a flag. And that feeling of unity is so important. It, it, you feel it, it permeates through the entire club. When you have, a, a fracture, if you have this, even this air of, oh, to the, the administration or the board or the coaches, uh, they're, they're not liking what we're doing and all that. The players feel that. They really feel every part of it. And, and you're right. You've got so many players. Just, you could have the most open, um, gregarious, wonderful, communic- communicative coach going around. There are still a group of young players who are petrified of the senior coach and talking to the senior coach and feeling like he is unapproachable. So having not just the captain, but key leaders who can understand what they're feeling, what their motivations are, what their concerns are, what's going on in their personal lives, everything like that. And just constantly having those conversations with the coaches that those young players can't have. That's where you get the really inclusive united feel of the group. Um, So you're right. That's, Joel is, Joel's been outstanding at that from the moment he first walked in as a young player, but he's so good at it now. Um, and it's, it's still, you know, you know the, this idea that there's these one-off meetings or these one-off games or training sessions that solve everything and everything clicks overnight and you become this great team, that's a complete load of bulldust. Yeah. It is the million little different little conversations and interactions that happen every day is what goes towards being a United group and winning a premiership. Now, just a little concern about when Stokes, you and Cal and guys like that had this brilliant relationship with Bomber where you could be cheeky as hell and stir him up and 
um, have some fun with him. And then he could smack you guys so hard if he wanted you to do something. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> and the very next day, you'd be back at him again with some fun. And, and it was this great relationship. I never had that with him, but I could also walk in and just go bang with a big footy. If we were talking footy in a group and a team thing, we just talk footy better than better than most going around because we just didn't care about each other's feelings. If it needed to get done, it was let's get it, let's get it fixed because this is what the team needed. Um, but I couldn't have I didn't have that fun and banter with the coach. I wasn't as comfortable doing that with. So all these different personalities go together. And then that's how you come up with this, with this great group. And having people like Joel and Harry and that at the club, so crucial. If, 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 you, and, if you and Harles were to have a baby, it would be Joel Selwood. I think he's a great combination <laughs> of both you two guys. Uh, clearly, I passed down the good looks to the uh, baby. No, uh, well, definitely not. Yeah, was, <laughs> on that note. Looks in Harles' body. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Scotland. Oh, on that note, uh, yeah, well, we should stop that. <laughs> we should move on, you think? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. All right. Thank you to all of our listeners for all their questions there. Dave, great question. We could, talk, we could do a whole podcast on that and what, uh, what goes into those elements of being a really good leader and, and that uh, communication with the group. But we don't have time for that. We appreciate you supporting us uh, for this podcast. Let's hope we're talking another Cat Swim, the Power Call Country Festival on Sunday. Geelong and the Bombers support the Farmers Market Online. Jump on the Geelong Cats website. They'll have all the details there. How you can produce, um, support the local producers. And let's talk some more footy next week. Scotty and Stokesy, let's talk another Cats win and hopefully top of the ladder Cats. But thank you both for your time. Enjoy the week. We will talk next week. <laughs>